Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Lazy Real Talk. All right. I hope everyone had a great start of, uh, of the week and also a great start of spring. Uh, the weather is so nice. <clears throat> it's April. All right. Um, we'll talk about de-dollarization. It has been a hot topic in the news, right? A growing number of countries are looking to de-dollarize and seek to settle trades in their own currencies. And China China and Renminbi are at the center of this trend. And the, the number of key events, <clears throat> the, the number of key events are so on, Mar on March 28th, China National Offshore Oil Company and France's Total Energy completed the first cross-border renminbi settlement transaction for natural gas. March 30th, uh, Brazil announced an agreement with China to move away from using the U.S. dollar as an in inter intermediary currency and instead use local currencies for trade settlements. April 1st, the Indian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that India and Malaysia had agreed to use the Indian ruby for trading for trade settlements. And then, uh, in addition, Brazil and Argentina, two of the largest economies in South America, have discussed the creation of a common currency. The UAE and India are in talks to use the ruby instead of the dollar to trade non-oil commodities. In January, Saudi Arabia said um, for the first time in 48 years that it was open to trading in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. Chinese media claims that the percentage of total currency, total local, local currency settlements between China and Russia could reach 65% by 2023. Um, and also Iran, UAE, Saudi Arabia, India, Singapore, Venezuela, Turkey, and Indonesia. Uh, more than 30 countries are now gradually switching to the renminbi in trade and or in investments. So these events have prompted a wave of publicity um, around the world of the de-dollarization concerns. So tonight we'll talk about uh, one, how did the de-dollarization come about? And then we'll talk about the essence of the China-Brazil agreement. And that will be the bulk of the talk tonight because it will take a, a good chunk of time. And then we'll, 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 say, we'll talk about what do the Chinese say about de-dollarization? Um, I think it's interesting to see what the Chinese say because we can read about the perspectives outside China. And I assume you have already followed them or read the, the news reports here. I found it interesting to see what the Chinese are saying about this trend. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. And also, very quickly, at the end, I will talk about, is there a currency that can really replace the dollar? So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> First, um, the three-year, so how did the de-dollarization come about? Well, the, the three-year pandemic and the war in Ukraine have changed the world forever. Inflation and the strong dollar have caused financial burdens for many developing countries. Uh, a weak local currency and has caused food prices to soar and increase their debt, um, their debt burdens. So, for example, the sharp decline in tourism during the pandemic and the soaring dollar were cited as triggers of Sri Lanka's debt crisis. Vietnamese officials also have blamed fuel supply difficulties on the strong dollar. And secondly, after Russia invaded Ukraine, the United States, together with its allies, froze nearly half of Russia's foreign exchange reserves, uh, which is about $300 billion. Some Asian countries, such as India, are reluctant to take sides. They may perceive the sanctions as weaponizing the U.S. dollar and the global payment system. So India has been developing its own payment system, modeled to some extent after the SWIFT the SWIFT system, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand have all established systems to conduct trade in their own currencies rather than the U.S. dollars. And the third and the most important reason behind the de-dollarization trend is certainly um, Beijing's push for renminbi globalization. 
Uh, Beijing has been implementing renminbi globalization as a national financial strategy to challenge the hege hegemony of the U.S. dollar for almost two decades. It started two decades ago. Uh, slowly, they're making progress. And in 2014, people say when China and Russia signed the China-Russia uh, currency exchange agreement, that was when China uh, sort of really pushed um, the CCP's currency globalization path or really kick it off then. Um, and it, it's the Remibi globalization um, was an initiative that's written into the work plan at the CCP's 20th Party Congress last fall. So in the past five years, the scale of cross-border Remibi settlement expanded 3.5 times to 42 trillion RMB in 2022 from 2017. So over the five-year period from 2017 to 2022, um, the, the scale of cross-border RMB settlement expanded 3.5 times. So how does Beijing assess its own effort and accomplishment? Um, I want to share with you a, a quote from Pan Gongsheng, the deputy governor of China's uh, Central Bank, who is also the head of China's Foreign Currency Bureau. Um, I don't know if he is still holding that post, but at least for the fa uh, past five years, he was. And with the, the two sessions, I was trying to find out if he's still holding that post or some, somebody else replaced him. I, I couldn't find any information. So I assume he's still in that, in that role. Um, I do have a picture of him. I do have a picture. Somebody suggested I put uh, names and pictures of CCP officials that I mentioned. So I took that to heart. And oh my goodness, we're, um, here we go. Oh, there we go. So there is this guy. Um, yeah, he is the deputy governor of China's central bank and also the guy in charge of um, foreign currency bureau. So he said, um, he said this, he said, after more than a decade of effort with the establishment of renminbi clearing banks and local currency exchange networks, the development of off offshore renminbi market, you know how the renminbi has an onshore market and an offshore market, and the continuously improving overseas, overseas footprint of Chinese financial institutions, right? So he listed, he, he listed, um, a list of efforts by China, which included establishment of renminbi clearing banks and local currency exchange networks, the development of offshore renminbi market, and then the continuous, the continuously improving overseas footprint of Chinese financial institutions. And he said, we feel that the renminbi has achieved an initial effective network for international use. I thought that's interesting. He said in it, the, the network he described is effective and initial. It's just at the at the start of um it's just at the starting stage or initial stage, but it's effective um for international use. So that's I think is a very good summary of China's effort uh, for the past two decades. All right, so that's just a quick intro about um this this trend and China's effort behind the um, the renminbi globalization. Now I want to talk about the China Brazil agreement because that seems to have caught the attention of both the world's media and also the Chinese media. So um, let's just see. So you see. Yeah, so world me world me sorry, world's me to have all commented um at the end of March when China Brazil striked uh, a deal. Right? Say so they used the word um to ditch dollar for, for trade. So here you have um it's all the same same mess headline. Um and then um it was interpreted by the market as a move to reject the dollar. And, but an interesting phenomenon occurred. Some Chinese bloggers and even state media refuted this headline. Um, 
refuted this headline. And they said, they said, um, they challenged the claim that China and Brazil are rejecting the dollar. I'll, I'll show you one, this, this one. Um, maybe I can, can you still see the, the text? Maybe it's too small. I'll make myself disappear. Oh, here we go. So, um, yeah, so they, um, this one, the headline said, no, not excluding dollar. Brazil and China renminbi settlement promotes easier bilateral trade and investment. It said that the country's central banks establish a clearing arrangement cooperation, and this is not the first such memorandum, memorandum of cooperation on renminbi clearing arrangements. And it, it says that China's central bank has authorized 31 renminbi clearing banks in 29 countries and regions. So it's just, say, denying the fact that the two countries are rejecting the dollars. And another report, another report um, is, is even more straightforward. And this one says, Brazil to use renminbi for trade settlement, question mark. Um, and then it's just calling, um, it's saying that some social media personalities should stop the de-dollarization joke. Um, and this article is very interesting, um, because it kind of contradicts with the CCP's official narratives, right? So, and it says, so it says, well, uh, it, uh, the, on the first one, it says, among other things, Brazil has been hyped by some social media outlets as a country that will adopt renminbi settlement, but this is not true. And then he says, first of all, the Brazilian government has never announced that it will abandon the dollar, nor has it signed an agreement with China to use only the renminbi for settlement. In fact, what China signed with Brazil was the establishment of a clearing arrangement for the renminbi, which means that in the future, Brazil and China will be able to use renminbi or Brazilian currency for direct settlements in some trade, instead of having to rely on the US dollar as an intermediary currency. This simply provides a diversified settlement option rather than weakening the position of the US dollar. And I gave it an example. In 2019, China and Brazil signed a 30 billion yuan, uh, which is about 4.5 billion US dollar currency exchange agreement to boost trade and investment between the two countries. This does not mean that Brazil will abandon the use of dollar except when responding to possible financial risks and liquidity constraints. So, and it, it went on to say that in addition, there are many practical issues that need to be uh, resolved before renminbi can be used in Brazil. The security and the convenience of the payment platform, um, the exchange rate risk and how to establish the renminbi exchange channels and so on and so forth. And I gave it also, I gave it another example. So in 2015, China signed an agreement with Brazil to establish a renminbi clearing center to facilitate direct settlement and reduce transaction costs between the two countries. However, large scale renminbi settlements did not occur because the two countries still need to solve the problems of payment systems, regulatory rules, taxation, and other issues. So it says, although the renminbi is gradually increasing its status, it still has a long way to go. Um, and, and it says, currently, ma many countries and regions prefer to use the US dollar as the settlement currency because of its wide circulation. Um, I think I have it on the next page. Yeah. Um, because of its wide circulation, ease of use, stable exchange rates, and value preservation. So I was surprised that these reports are saying things contradictory to the official narratives. I mean, it's saying the truth, but it's not, it's not the official line, right? And uh, I, I, I think recently we've seen more and more Chinese speak out, and it's a good sign, 
When it comes to financial matters, I think Chinese seem to be more forthcoming and daring to speak, um, daring to speak their mind when compared with political issues. So after all, Chinese know best how strong their currency really is. Every educated person in China knows the value of renminbi versus dollar, and so they aren't they aren't fooled by the propaganda. And so maybe that's the, that's why we're seeing articles like that. Um, regardless, the reason I think the Chinese also gave us more a, a more realistic look into the China Brazil agreement. And after reading some Chinese reports, I found that the agreement between China and Brazil actually only reduces the dollar as an intermediary currency,、um, uh, but not excluding it. The Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the news about the China-Brazil agreement was announced by Apex Brazil. Here, here I have a picture, and、um, it's a private organization. It's a private organization, and it's not by the announcement was not、uh, issued by the Brazilian government or by the Brazilian central bank. And Apex Brazil is the、um, the Brazilian trade and investment promotion agency. It was established in 1997 as a non-profit entity, founded by the private sector. The agency has been working with the Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs to promote Brazilian products and services to foreign countries.、Um, so it sounds it sounds like more. More like a marketing agency than a mon monetary management or trade agency. So, regarding the agreement with China, it says that the two countries can conduct bilateral trade transactions in local currencies and not in U.S. dollars. Note that the wording here is "can use," and it didn't say "can only use." So, it's misleading and incorrect for foreign press to to claim that China and Brazil have ditched the dollar. Moreover, we know that in foreign trade, even if the government allows yuan, the Chinese yuan, to be used as a settlement currency, it doesn't mean that the private companies will use it. Right? Renminbi is only an option, subject to people's willingness to to use, subject to these companies' willingness to use. So at this point, we still don't know the impact and the scale of this agreement. Maybe the private sector in Brazil is not so enthusiastic. About about using the yuan, and we'll continue to use the dollar. We just don't know the impact. So, what do the Chinese say about de-dollarization? And another article posted on NetEase is written by an econ a Chinese economist, and is titled. Let me make this bigger. Oh, here here it is. And this one, the title says, "The entire world is de-dollarizing, but what replaces dollar may not be renminbi."、Um, the title sounds kind of neutral, but if you read the article, it's it's very sharp.、Um, the author recognizes that de-dollarization is a is a is a global trend that we're likely to continue, but the, but the renminbi is not the currency to replace the dollar. And he said, and and this is what 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 he said or she said. The problem lies in the fact that de-dollarization must begin with a currency that can replace the dollar as the global reserve and trade settlement currency. However, the fact is that even if more and more countries de-dollarize and the global economy de-dollarizes, the alternative to dollar would definitely not be the renminbi. It's because so far, and even for a long time to come, the renminbi's interna international status is still very low. Its share of international payment is very small, and its international creditworthiness is seriously lacking. It's certain that with the renminbi's current status, creditworthiness, and market share, it's unlikely to replace the dollar as the global currency in the foreseeable future.、Um, So the, the the Chinese author the article went on to say that、um, he attributed the the three weaknesses of the renminbi to China's large but not strong economy. Every major countries have their national brands. For example, Korea has Samsung, Taiwan has、um, TSMC, right? I mean, the U.S. has IBM, GE. 
every country has some major industrial brands that represent the country's um, technological or um, industrial accomplishments. Every country has that, but China has none. The closest one may be Huawei, but the world feared Huawei or doesn't trust Huawei because it's really not a private company, but a, a state apparatus. So the author said that China's lack of strong domestic industrial brands um, and its lack of core technologies and China's inability to produce key components that contribute, that make, that make a significant contribution to the worldwide supply chains, as well as China's economy, um, uh, as well as Chinese economy's dependence on cheap labor and a large um, demographic population are precisely the manifestation of a large but a weak economy. Um, I used to say that nobody knows China's problems better than the Chinese. When they can and want to, they say it better than anyone. So this economist suggested that other than, let me come back. So um, this economist suggested that other than cheap labor and a large domestic pop consumer market, China doesn't have any real economic competitiveness to take over the United States economically, and therefore renminbi will, uh, will not outshine the dollar. Um, I want to add that cheap labor and a large consumer market are also declining fast as we speak, leaving China with no clear competitiveness at all. Um, and another author argued that if Yuan wants to take over the dollar, a strong Chinese economy is the foundation and the prerequisite. And the core of China's economic competence, according to that author, is scientific and technological innovation. Um, and he said, if China's economy wants to beat beat out that of the United States, it must take the lead in science and technology. We know um, I'm, I'm making a series of videos on the tech war. The, the one, one, came out, one came out last week on the industrial software. The next one will come out hopefully this Friday. And, and, and then semiconductor, I've made a number of videos about China's semiconductor industries and they all suffer a similar problem that is talent drought. Um, so a severe talent drought is a, is, a, is a problem that threatens China's technological advancement. And the reason for the talent drought is because the schools, Chinese China's schools are not providing adequate education to its students. And, and the reason for that is academic corruption. So academic corruption is a serious problem plaguing um, China. I made a video called, Why Are Schools Killing China's Future? You, you can check it out. It came out last, maybe last October or maybe November. Um, by the way, if American schools fail to provide good education to our students, we won't be competitive either. So in summary, dollar's role as the reserve currency is, re, is re, irreplaceable and unchallenged. 40% of global trade is denominated in dollars. About 40% of the debt is issued in dollars. Nearly 60% of global currency reserves are in dollars. And close to 90% of foreign exchange transactions involve the dollar. Um, and the US dollar accounts for 42% of interbank transactions uh, on the SWIFT net network, while the share of the Chinese yuan is only 2%. Half of the $2 trillion in paper currency, the paper currency dollar, circulates outside China, while China's offshore renminbi is only a tiny fraction of its currency. Um, and so for Brazil, let's go back to Brazil, the total foreign reserves are about 300 billion, uh, with the yuan accounting for only 5.37%, and the, the vast majority still remains the US dollar. Um, now let's talk about what will replace the dollar in the trend of de-dollarization. De the most likely replacement for the dollar is the euro. 
Eurozone population is 343 million, slightly higher than the, the, the U.S. population of, what, 333 million? So it's about the same. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the European Union. I'm talk, com, talking about the, the Eurozone countries. So Eurozone population is about the same as, as the United States, and its GDP is between 14 to 15 trillion. It's lower than the U.S. GDP of 25 trillion. Um, but it represents the most powerful 20 plus countries on the European continent. So the euro has the most potential to replace the dollar. But there's one problem with the euro. People in the eurozone have one common currency, but not a common treasury. Each country has its own government. Um, the 20 plus countries have different financial constraints, different government spendings and borrowings and different levels of government debts. So without a single government, a single currency is difficult to manage and last. Um, and if you look at after the war, the dollar strengthened and the euro weakened. So even the Chinese know the hope for the euro to replace the dollar isn't very high either. Um, and then there's another, oh, there's another reason why it's difficult for the Chinese Yuan to replace the dollar. For renminbi to reach in globalization, there, there's still a question of how uh, the money will circulate to countries around the world, right? The premise is that the renminbi needs to have enough purchasing power and Beijing is, um, and, and that Beijing must be willing to sacrifice its trade surplus and import more than it exports. And, and we know this isn't realistic for China. Um, uh, there's one deputy director of international finance at the U.S. Federal Reserve Board. His, his name is uh, Itin, or Itin, I don't know how to pronounce it, Gagnon, I think it's a French name. Um, he said that the world has been taking advantage of the dollar because countries who, that want, countries want to run large trade surpluses with the U.S., and the U.S. has allowed them to do so and have had trade deficits. So in other, in other words, when countries want to run a trade surplus, they have to invest that money in the U.S. so that its currency is strong and stable. So this is impossible for China to accomplish. China will have to transform itself from an exporter to an importer um, for its currency to preserve value. So in order for renminbi to replace the U.S. dollar, it needs to meet five criteria. Uh, first, it must be freely traded, which is it's not. Uh, Beijing must stop manipulating the exchange rates. It must stop controlling the central bank. Its political system must be stable, which we know is not. Uh, and the government must be credible, and we know is not. So as long as the CCP is in power, None of the five conditions that we just mentioned will 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 be uh, will be met. So we may see more and more countries talk about de-dollarization. Uh, but if these countries are really smart, I think they're probably just saying it. You know, to I think they are only going to accept. You know, if you look at Saudi Arabia, it does not have. It exports oil to China, but does not have a whole lot to buy from China because, right? I mean, the it, so what is it going to do with the renminbi it has from selling oil to China? It does not have anything to buy, so it's it, it's difficult. So, um, so unless so essentially, it's a it's a barter. So you you only trade the amount um, that you want to import from China. Right. Anything beyond your import from China is is you, it, it's it's the money that you can't use. So essentially, it's a trade. Um, but for countries like Saudi Arabia that doesn't really have a whole lot to import from China, I mean, I don't think they're interested in, in having a lot of renminbi. Um, so, so we may. I really get the sense this is just a lot of publicity. There's just so much. A publicity outside China that even the Chinese bloggers and economists find it hard to believe. 
Um, and so they express their opinions and saying that that's not necessarily the trend. Um, so I think it's just a lot of publicity, a lot of, yeah, a, a lot of that, but not so much substance. So that's all. Um, all right. Okay, let me see if people have questions for me. Thank, thank you. I'll um, go start from the beginning. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. Um, uh, let me see. Amy Lai, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. From Sir Humphrey, thanks for this timely live stream, Lee. It's scary some of the countries placing bets against America. I wonder about shared values and have they thought about the consequences for our way of life? Um, yes, that's, I think as American, I, 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 uh, I do share that concern that you have. Um, but I can also see the perspective from some of those Asian countries like Vietnam or, I mean, Vietnam is not, is, is not one of the countries like Indonesia or India in this case. Um, like India it does not want to take side in this, in, in this war, in this sanction. And it has, has traditionally kept a good relations with Russia. So, um, and so their view of the U S government and maybe different, maybe very different from, from an American perspective. It, it's not necessarily the same perspective as China. I don't think it's the same kind of anti-American perspective. I don't think that's the case, but they do have their concern. And also, uh, and it, it, it's the concern really you have, to, maybe if the, the pandemic didn't happen, if the war didn't happen, then this con there's no concern. But with the way the world economy is heading, uh, I think people do have concerns and they, they are concerned about, um, I think some of them are doing it for themselves. And um, so it's, it's very complex. I think, I think America, the United States government need to do everything it can to, uh, to grow its economy, to, to build up its economy, to, to be strong economically. But some of the policies that we've seen are not necessarily doing that. And uh, so regardless of the, the political debates that we see in this country, I mean, people do see a divided America politically outside, outside the United States, and they have their views and they have their opinions about what's happening in the US. So, and they have their observations uh, and they do have their worries. So we Americans cannot just assume that um, yeah, we need to understand what people's concerns are. Um, but regardless what we do, we should first and foremost make uh, the, the country strong economically, right? That's, that's the best we can do for ourselves and for our allies and for all the other countries who, who may change their mind. Because if the United States is not strong economically, then people are gonna, people are gonna change, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna be neutral, they're gonna watch, well, who's gonna win this competition? So we have no option but to build our economy strong. But thank you for the question. I think it's a very good question. Um, David Morgan, thank you. Uh, all right, so, okay, Steve Cam, great information, simply put, China is in trouble and the US is going to boom due to sovereign industrial buildup. Uh, yes, uh, it, it's a, I think that that will happen, but it's just a, a matter of timing. How fast are we seeing this? I think everything is timing. And for some reason, things the CCP is so meticulous about its timing. Um, if you re really look at a lot of things that's happening, um, they have calculated a lot of things and timed everything. Like this, this um, military drill in Taiwan was timed after 
the former Taiwanese president left China and the the the, the, the French president left China. So uh, yeah, it's 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 about timing. All right. So from Michael Mayo, um, the problem is, what if a country has good has goods to export but can't afford a strong reserve of U.S. Uh, euro because those currencies are too strong, and the same country has renminbi denominated debt, and the same country has renminbi denominated debt. Um, that is a problem. Um, yeah, I, I think if a country get themselves or countries that that get themselves into maybe denominated debt is not is generally not in a good situation. Um, the, you're referring to, you're probably referring to the Belt and Road countries that have a lot of renminbi debt. That they're already they're already in a in a trap. So yeah, they they cannot afford to uh, afford a strong uh, dollar. Yeah. Um, they're not. It's it's sad for those for those countries. It's sad. Um, all right. So uh, from Ed C. Macron can return to the to Frank. And join Xi Jinping and the Renminbi. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Sri, yeah, Sri Lanka is one one country. That, um, Ed, the, the the example is Sri Lanka, right? It has a lot of debt, uh, and then the the strong dollar, you know, it, it, uh, made made the problem worse, and then also the pandemic pandemic made the it's um tourist tourism income um dwindling so all right let's see if people have any questions for me um and then from d wilt 622 lei what do you think about brazil's president well he's very pro china i think china is very happy i mean china made a whole series of moves after he 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 was elected um or after he was, um, yeah, what was that? Was last fall, right? Last winter, last fall. Uh, of course, China is very happy. The two are, um, yeah, th they're going to help each other. But I'm not so, not, I'm not so sure they're helping their people. Um, the two presidents, the two heads of states, are helping each other politically or geopolitically. But are they doing the right things for their people? I'm not so sure. Uh, from Frosty Flake, part of this is Russian propaganda against the dollar. Kathy Woods and Art Lafer um, discuss these issue at ARK Invest. Part of it is Russia propaganda. Which part? I'm not. I'm not so sure. Um, if you could elaborate that, and that will help us. Um, let's see. Question from one of nineteen. The CCP is the country with surpluses more than oops, more than any other country. Doesn't this mean that they will force other countries to keep reserves of renminbi to solve trade imbalances? Does this mean that they will force other countries to solve reserves of to solve? Well, I mean, other they, they can force other countries, but what are what are what are, what do the other countries do with renminbi because it's not traded i mean you 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 have a lot of unlike dollar that you could that you could buy or you could trade the renminbi it's not tradable and then you can only buy from china or maybe you could buy you can't buy from russia because i don't know maybe they can buy from russia you by using renminbi or buy from iran um Right, I mean, what are you going to do with renminbi? So these countries are not. I mean, they have to think what are they going to do with renminbi. So I don't think it would be easy for them to to be forced, and even China's uh, foreign current foreign reserve is still 
uh, pinned on the U.S. dollar. 60% of China's foreign reserve currencies are still U.S. Uh, U.S. assets. And and recently, it's been selling the treasury bill, treasury, what do you call that? The T-bills, but it's buying the agency bonds. So it's just swapping, um, it's just swapping the T-bills with other assets, still government-backed, um, or, or similar government um, instruments uh, for, for a high yield. I mean, it's still, they're just changing from, from holding T-bills to, um, to the agency, uh, what is it called? Agency bonds, yeah. So, so China's 60% is still, it's not, it's not selling. Uh, it's not, and, and also part of the re reduction is attrib uh, attributable to uh, valuation changes. Uh, so I think it was the bulk of the reduction in value has to do with the valuation, not because of sale of um, U.S. US assets. So, and th there, are, there are articles, a number of articles that talk about that. So chi China is still pinning its, 60% uh, of its uh, foreign reserves are still U.S., um, U.S. dollar uh, denominated assets. So, why why would it force other countries to hold renminbi? Right? I mean, people people are smart. They're going to do what's good for their country. They're not going to. I mean, if if they're smart, I can't say I can't say people all think logically. Um, all right, let me see. Let's see. Um, uh, question. Any other questions? From Frosty from Frosty F Flake. Uh, talk Chevy our YouTube with Kathy Woods and Art Lef Okay, I'll I'll take a look. Um yeah, it's a barter exchange. Somebody um Everyone, I mean, see, this, this is why I think Chinese know the value of dollar. Ch Chinese as a nation, okay, uh, know the value of dollar more than anyone. Because if you talk to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the, the peasants living in rural China. I'm talking about every educated Chinese would do anything to, to exchange for dollar, but they can't because the government have, have this limit. So the entire nation or anyone who has money in China wants to get dollar. So the government can't fool its people. Uh, but so that's why when, when Western media are saying, oh, you know, the dollar is gonna be challenged by, by Yuan, the people that believe that the least are the Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, sixty percent. Sixty percent of China's foreign reserve is U.S. assets, dollar-denominated assets. Uh, from D. Welt six twenty-two, lady, do you think China is trying to get with Brazil just to be close to the USA, like we are in Taiwan, just to be close to U.S. Just to be close to USA. What do you mean? Oh, you want to, they want to create some sort of alliance? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the two, definitely. De definitely. All right. So I don't see any other question. Um, and I will end it here tonight. I hope this is helpful. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for joining me and have uh, a great rest of the week. Okay, bye-bye.